everyone. It's the Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I just wanted to let you know really quick that I did change the name of my YouTube channel to the RD, RBDJ. Um, once I start um, doing my DJ gigs for the summer, hopefully soon, uh, some of these COVID-19 restrictions will be slowly lifted. I'll be taking you on those adventures. So remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I put out a video. And hopefully soon, I'll be sharing um, my weekends with you with my DJ gigs. Hey everyone, me again, the RV DJ. I wanted to share something with you. Um, there's an email that I got today from Keystone RV, which is the manufacturer of my camper. To give a little bit of a backstory, last August, I had an issue with my furnace. And I called the dealer, and the dealer came out a couple days later, uh, said that the furnace needed a circuit board, but that because my camper was only a year old at the time, that I should go that uh, make it a, a warranty issue, and that he they would contact uh, Keystone about that. So, um, needless to say, um, I had read on one of the forums on Facebook, people were starting to have issues with their floor being soft in various parts of their camper. So, I uh, most of the t most of the time, the people were having issues where it was. Uh, in the bedroom area on the right side of the bed. So while I had the service manager from the dealership on the phone, who I had a previous history with from a um, previous dealership that I bought my last trailer from, I was walking around and lo and behold, I had found this soft spot in uh, on the floor in the bedroom. And I told him about that and he said, okay. He said, let's get that started as the main warranty issue, but I'll also list the furnace uh, issue on there at the same time. So about a week or two later, um, I get a phone call or an email, I forgot which one it was, from uh, the people from Keystone RV in Indiana saying that they had received my warranty process from the dealership and that they were gonna go forward and uh, deal with uh, the floor in the trailer. In the meantime, I had already had the uh, dealership had come out and under warranty had fixed the furnace. So I had to tell our, uh, Keystone that they didn't have to worry about that it was already taken care of. They told me what the process of having the floor looked at was is they were going to call the dealership back and have them come out and uh, look at the floor in the bedroom. Um, they also asked me to open the pass-through storage in the front of the trailer to check that out uh, to see if, if I had any soft spots in there also and just to double check the entire floor of the trailer just to see if there were any other issues that may have happened during the course of you know me not being there during the week only on weekends. So I did that. I taped off one area in front of the fridge in the kitchen that I thought might have had an area. And when I came back the following weekend, I had seen that the uh, dealership had taped off the section in the bedroom uh, that was soft and also the section in the pass-through storage that was also uh, had an issue. Keystone RV uh, tells me, uh, they call me back and we schedule a date uh, to have the trailer picked up and taken back to Indiana. Now, here it is the middle to the end of August. I'm still working, I'm still DJing. Um, I still need the camper to stay in on weekends. The campground isn't closing until November 3rd. So I told them, I said, you know, this is the deal. You can have it. Any time after November 3rd, I can make arrangements to get in there so you guys can take it out. As we got closer to the closing date, um, they got me in touch with the transporter that was going to come and get the camper from the campground. It was supposed to be the weekend of November 
first, uh, first, second, and third. Third being Sunday, which would have been the last day I could have been there anyway. They could have, they could come and get it that day. Friday the first, uh, early evening, I get a phone call from a Massachusetts phone number. I answer the phone, and here it is the transporter from that Keystone had arranged to come and get the trailer. He said, "Hey." Can you come, you know, can I come tomorrow, meaning Saturday the 2nd, to come and get this camper? So I thought about it for a quick second. And I said, well, you know, I still have to get all my stuff out of it. I have to pack it up, throw it in my car. You know, you guys want, you know, it's got to be empty of all of my personal belongings. Nothing can be in the trailer except for what came with it when I bought it. So he says, well, you know, if that's a problem, we can make it for another date. So I said, no, no, no. I said, you're in the area. I said, you might as well come and get it. I can deal with the rest. So here we had a full day because his schedule, uh, according to his GPS, he wasn't going to be near us until at least 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we had most of the day and part of the Friday evening to pack everything up, get it in my car, so they could come and get this camper from us. Saturday comes, we're, you know, going through everything, we're packing everything up, we're winterizing the camper, we're unplugging everything, we're, you know, doing everything. He calls at like two o'clock, says he's stuck in traffic, he's not gonna be to us until at least six, six thirty. Okay, cool, that buys us more time. Um we literally got done packing up the camper, we were closing the door and locking it when he came through the gate at 6.15. He came and got the trailer. Um, he was out of there maybe about an hour or so later. It hit the parking lot at Keystone RV in Indiana on Tuesday afternoon, I believe it was, the 5th. I think it was the 5th. Anyway, um, it sat in their parking lot for two weeks uh, before they got to even looking at what was going on with it. I was dealing with this woman, excuse me, in service, in the customer service, in the actual service department. She was uh, one of the service advisors. Great communication. Um, any questions that I had, she, she answered. Um, I told her, I said, there's one condition um, about this camper. I said, and I asked her first, I said, how long from breakdown to when I get it back is this whole process going to take? And she said, it's about eight weeks. And I said, okay, I told her the situation. I said, during the summer, I use this camper to stay in for the weekends when I'm working down the shore. I need to have this camper back by the middle of March. No later than that because the campground opens at the beginning of April. And I need to make sure that we have it back and I can dewinterize it and get all the bugs out of it in case there's any issues and I have to contact you. So she says, okay, no problem. I'll let them know. I'll take that into consideration. They got the trailer in the shop on December 4th. Um, so it was actually a month that it was sitting out on the lot before they actually uh, could get in the shop. And slowly I'm learning from this Facebook forum that... Um, more and more people are having this issue. Different floor plans. It wasn't exactly the same floor plan as the one that I have. Um, they were having issues in different parts of the camper, um, not just the bedroom. So it was. They were starting to get an influx of these campers that are having these this this issue. So I got in almost right at the beginning of of uh, when the, when this all was starting to happen. They got it in on December fourth. They started taking apart. Now in order to to Look at the floor and and do any repairs necessary. They have to dismantle the camper, take the roof off, take the side walls off, take this um the front the front cap off, take the rear everything down to the bare frame with nothing but floor. Uh and they weren't sure if they were going to replace the entire floor. They weren't sure if they were going to just swap it out and give me a new camper. They had to get their guys in there and really see how far the damage was and to what extent it was going to take um, to make their decision. So a couple of weeks later, I get a, uh, another email 
going back and forth with them about this process um, that they decided that they're going to replace the floor in the trailer as opposed to swapping it out and give me a new camper under warranty and that's what they were going to do so fast forward to the beginning of January I get an email from this lady again from the service department in Keystone the campers all ready um, they're, they're just gonna do their you know their final checkup on it um, make sure it passes quality control and everything like that all the systems work and they were sending it back but they had to send it back to the dealership. Uh, they couldn't just send it back straight to the campground. So in the middle of January, I've also been in contact with the RV dealership during this whole process. Middle of January, I get a phone call. Hey, the camper's back. Um, we're gonna check it out and uh, make sure it passes and we're gonna you know, bring it back to you. Actually, that's not true. I get the phone call from the service manager at the dealership and he says, your trailer made it back, but we had to turn around and send it back to Indiana because it did not pass quality control. Well, at this point, I was like, a fit to be tied. I said, you sent it back and then you called me instead of calling me and then sending it back? I said, I, you know, I could have like ran over there really quick to take a look at it with you. You know, I mean, so he says, well, it didn't pass our quality control. I, I, I told the guy to wait and we hooked it back up and we sent it back to Indiana. So I call the lady at customer service. I tell her what happened. I said, I don't know what's going on here. I said, the dealership said it's in more shape than it was when you got it. And, you know, what's going on? So she says, let, us, let me get it back. I will, when it comes into the parking lot, I will have them pull it into the service bay that is directly in front of me. Let me find out what's going on and, and I'll get back to you. I said, okay. I said, but you have to understand now I'm really under a time crunch. It is almost the end of January. I need this camper back soon. She's so she she says, "All right, let me find out what's going on." She calls me back. She says, "Okay, you know, a couple of days uh, the next day actually it left on a on a Monday. It got back to Indiana on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, he got back really quick." And she says, "I don't know what happened." She says, uh, "You know, but in the meantime, the the, the dealer had sent me pictures because I wanted to see exactly what they were talking about." And she says, I don't know how it left like this. She said, this is just wrong. She goes, I have not only, I took off four guys off of another project that they were working on to start working on your camper, but the project manager and the plant manager, which are two, you know, one and the same, the project manager slash plant manager are working on your camper solely so that we can get this figured out Fix it, find you know, find out what's going on, fix it, and get it back out to you before March. And needless to say, they had it for two more weeks, and they fixed everything. She sent me pictures. She said, I walked through it. My plant manager walked through it. Everything looks good. Everything's tight. Everything's fixed. We're shipping it back. And just to avoid any kind of problems or, you know, the, avoid the middleman, they were sending the camper back to me to the campground directly instead of going to the having it sent back to the dealership first um so it went right from indiana right back to me without having to stop at the dealership which i was really glad about i'm glad that the project manager decided to make that call um just so it wouldn't be another week or so before i would see the camper before i really needed it so it got back to the campground in the middle of february it was just it was just a cold day, but the guy got there between twelve and twelve thirty. I just had and meanwhile, the entire time I had all the stuff from the camper in the back of my car in totes and boxes and and everything else filled, you know, top to bottom, front to back. I couldn't see out my rear mirror, like it was a mess. And I was just happy that I was finally gonna get my car emptied and that the camper was coming back. Um, but it was a pretty chilly day, it was in the thirties. And all we did was, you know, when the camper came back, you know, we checked it out, signed off the, the manifest for the driver, let him go. We just threw the totes and boxes in, called it a day. Fast forward to the beginning of this month, um, after the, you know, with this COVID-19 pandemic and everything going on, we weren't allowed back into the campground on April 1st because there were still restrictions going on. 
we were finally allowed back in May 6th to uh, dewinterize and open up the campers and everything. There were no issues. The floor seems great. Everything works. All the systems work. Did have one little issue where we were missing the black handle, uh, black tank handle, uh, which Keystone sent a new handle out, no charge. They also forgot to send the camper back with um, the power cord and the hand, uh, the, the stabilizer jack crank handle and the spray hose uh, for the outside. Uh, they sent that out, no charge. Uh, that came like in two days. The pull valve, the pull handle for the black tank, that came the next day. And the whole time, this lady in customer service, at, at, in service department in, in, uh, in Indiana at Keystone, no issues, always great, friendly, never got snotty about anything. She was never nasty, always out there to help. At the end of this whole thing, I sent Keystone a, an email praising uh, her service, her customer service. Uh, how great she was to work with, how informative, and and uh, how she always kept in communication with me about what was going on with the camper. And uh, today, like I said, I got this email, with, and they are extending the warranty, not only the, the original three-year structural warranty that came with the camper, but they are extending that warranty for another three years from the date of repair, which is... February 20th so I'll be I'll be good till February 20th of 2023 for the structural warranty of three years plus they're extending the warranty on everything all the systems inside the freshwater system the black tank system gray tank freshwater the appliances uh, electrical system anything that you can think of they are extending the warranty on for another I forgot how long it said. I'll look at the uh, email again once once I get uh, a chance, but I'll put it in the uh, below. It, it's just amazing how great these people were uh, customer service wise and the dealing with this whole issue since last summer. I, I can't, I don't have anything bad to say about them. They've just gone above and beyond with this so I will, at the end of this video, I will put in the pictures of, uh, that they sent me, what the issues were, and with me getting it back. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say about Keystone. It's, it's just amazing what they did, uh, as far as, as making the customer happy. Now, some of you I know are going to say, oh, they didn't want a lawsuit, so they were going to, like, do anything that they could to avoid a lawsuit. And to keep you as a customer, you know what? I, I'm happy. I, I I don't care. You know, I wasn't even thinking about getting into some kind of class action lawsuit with them. As long as they made right on the on the problem, just giving me the extended warranty was just extra. It was just something extra that they really went above and beyond. So with that, I'll add in the pictures of uh, what the issues were with the camper. That's it. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.